Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. More Dead by Daylight. And we're gonna jump right into it with talking about perks and items because there's so much to talk about. <clears throat> so, in my previous video I did talk about, you know, I had Sprint Burst rank 1, Adrenaline, and all that, but I got rank 3 of Sprint Burst and it is, it is so good. 20 second cooldown with that 50%. Movement speed increase for 3 seconds, that is insanely good. I mean, I've been using it. I've played. I've used it in several matches, and it has saved me so many times. It gets me out of. It makes you untouchable, pretty much. I mean, there is a short window in which you can get hit, and I have gone down maybe once or twice. But after going through the wiki, and I'll put the link for the wiki to this game in the description in case you want to look some stuff up. But um. I've looked through all the perks, and I honestly think that Sprint Burst is probably the best standalone perk in the game right now, especially at rank 3. Rank 1 was 40 second cooldown, so at rank 3 the cooldown is cut in half, so it's, it's insanely good. Um, but right now I'm running with Hope rank 3 and Resilience rank 3, and of course Adrenaline rank 3. Uh, the philosophy behind Resilience is that if I'm injured I want to be able to get you know hopefully there's only one or two generators left and I can use that 9% to get those last couple of generators online to activate adrenaline and get that instant heal. Uh, some of the character specific perks for Claudette one is she can heal herself self-care she can heal herself without a med kit actually to be more specific on that but of course, I mentioned in my first video, she also has empathy, she can see injured survivors. I think rank 3 is unlimited range, so if you're injured, she can spot you. But I mean, being able to heal yourself, that's also just incredibly good without needing a med kit. Uh, the other one, botany knowledge, it increases the effectiveness of healing items or healing. I don't know if I'd burn a perk slot on that, but I mean... If you're starting off with Claudette and you have nothing better to use, go ahead. But So, her self-care combined with Meg Thomas's Sprint Burst, if you, say, teach one of these to the other, I mean, having Sprint Burst and being able to heal yourself, that is so good. I mean, you're working towards an ideal, like, god-tier survivor setup there. But I do see a lot of people running with Dwight. Uh, Dwight's character specific are more geared towards staying in a group and getting generators online uh, extremely quickly. So he has Prove Thyself and Leadership, which both activate depending on how many people are near you. Leadership, it grants a bonus to other survivors near you. It makes them do actions like percentage quicker. I think rank 3 is 9%. So if you're, if you have if your entire team is all in one generator, you're giving, I mean, 9% to every survivor. It's 27% increase. And if you have Prove Thyself, it's like a percentage increase per survivor that you're near. And you get, I think, up to 9% bonus in total yourself if you're near three other survivors. So, I mean, they get, that boosts up to about 36% efficiency increase. Oh, if you're all in one generator, plus the fact that there's four people working on one generator, you're going to burn through a generator extremely fast. So, Dwight, pretty good if you're in a group. However, that's not always ideal, because you probably want to be a little more spread out and have someone, at least one person, like running a distraction. Keeping the killer busy. Uh, obviously, Meg Thomas is she's geared towards this with Sprint. If you're a killer, you're not happy to be chasing someone around that can get this 50% movement speed increase every 20 seconds. But, uh, and I guess we'll talk about Jake. Jake's, um, I feel like he's a little bit on the weaker side of the perks, but he can learn the ability to sabotage traps and hooks without the need for a toolbox. So that is, that's pretty handy. The other one is... He significantly reduces the chances that he will startle crows when you walk next to them. Don't really see that being too effective. At higher level of games, 
maybe this could be viable because killers are going to start paying attention to those really subtle cues and they're going to start picking up on that uh, much easier. Uh, the other one is was Iron Will. And at rank 3, it basically completely nullifies the grunting that your character makes when you're injured. And again, at higher levels, that's going to make it, that's going to be a huge difference because if you get injured and you're trying to juke, you, you can't do it in close quarters against a good killer who's actually has his headphones on and he's listening and he, he's it's going to be easier to hear those grunts. So to have that completely nullified uh, by Iron Will is it's viable, definitely viable. But that is that is like a problem solving thing. Same with Claudette's self-care. Those are problem solving perks. However, Sprint Burst, and this is the reason I rate it the best perk, is because it's problem prevention. You're just completely preventing being hit, and so there's no need to heal yourself or uh, to prevent yourself from grunting if you just never get hit in the first place. So Sprint Burst combined with Intelligent Play is definitely up there, but again, if you can combine this with self-care, and I would combine, or I would replace adrenaline with self-care because you could heal yourself potentially infinite amount of times, whereas adrenaline will only pop once. All right, so I think that covers just about everything. Obviously, if you, you know, once this game gets a little older and you got, you know, all the characters at 50, and everybody has cross-teached every perk, I mean, you could have sprint burst self-care, sabotage, and maybe like Iron Will for the fourth one or whatever you want. And you're looking at a very intimidating looking survivor. But anyways, let's uh, let's look at items here. So I did, I have mentioned a couple times that the map was pretty useless. And it kind of is in regards to your survival. But I mean, if you're holding a map, and you just, let's say you run around and you scout out every single generator. I believe, yeah, there's seven generators on the map. Because it's, you need five plus two extra. And so if you, and it's 300 points if you get a map scout. So three times seven, you're looking at 2,100 points. So you get a pretty significant chunk of objective points just by running around the map. Uh, Meg Thomas is obviously somewhat good at this with the sprint burst. She can, you know, get across the map a little quicker. But there is an add-on. There's a couple add-ons that are pretty good for map, actually. The red twine. It says unlocks the ability to track the killer's belongings. And I wasn't really too sure what this meant, so I ran with it in-game. And luckily, I got up against a trapper, because what it means is that it basically allows you to see traps when you hold uh, right-click on, or you activate the map. So, and that's global, I believe. I mean, you could just see all his traps when you're when you open up the map. So for red twine, pretty good if you get up against a killer uh, or a trapper. Okay, so the craziest add-on probably for the medkit is this agent right here. And I mean, just using it alone, I think most people will say you can use this alone and then it'll give you an instant heal. By the way, if you're not familiar with this agent, okay, so it reduces charges by 25% and it allows you to instantly heal one health state on secondary action. And what secondary action means is when you're holding right click while you're using the medkit, you hit spacebar. There's no indication that you can hit spacebar, but you just hit spacebar and it will consume the agent and the medkit and it will uh, use that instant heal. But again, it reduces charges by 25%. So the medkit stock comes with 16 charges and it takes I'm 99% sure it takes 12 charges for a full heal without any skill checks. So if this reduces by 25%, you have 12 charges left, so if you just did a manual heal, it would completely consume the medkit anyway. However, there is a cool little build you can do if you do bandages plus an agent. Uh, the bandages adds an 8 extra charges, and that applies after the percentage reduction from the agent. So this puts you up to 20, and that's obviously more than enough for a manual heal without using the secondary action using the agent. But it does allow you, if you get hit, you can hold right click and heal yourself like you normally would use a medkit. 
but <clears throat> you'll have that agent in that med kit as sort of like a emergency mechanic. Now, if you just need to heal normally, you get away and you can just you can fill up the bar and do a normal <clears throat> normal right click heal. That's great. That's probably how you want to do it if you can get away with that. But again, you could always hit the space bar for the emergency heal, and you can keep this med kit and it won't disappear if you only do uh, the manual heal. So that emergency heal will always be there if you need it, but again don't forget that once you use it the med kit bandages and agent will be gone. But it just allows it to be more useful because you can get that in the extra heal. Another cool thing is gel dressings which function like the bandages plus 16 charges to the med kit so it doubles the med kit's charges but if you use it with the bandages you're looking at 40 charges total and that potentially allows for three heals which is quite a bit plus you get to keep the med kit if you don't die or uh, drop it but I mean I really like the agent more because you get one less heal but you have that extra emergency instant heal so med kit very some very cool stuff you can do with it and it's a very well, it's a very good item all right let's go to the toolbox next so not too much with the toolbox other than this thing right here, the brand new part. Uh, reduces charges by 50%, but it'll allow you, just like the agent, to instantly repair a generator on secondary action. So that is, I mean, you know how long it takes to repair a generator, especially solo. So this is huge. Um, cuts charges in half. So toolboxes, it'll go down to 75 charges, because normally I have 150. You can put in a wired spool with this to add 50 extra charges, so it'll be at 125. And that's not too much less than a standard toolbox. And then plus you'll have this like trump card that you can pop on a generator to instantly get it up. So I mean, you can use the right click to repair a generator, and once it gets really low on charges, you can go to another generator and just pop it instantly and you just solo two generators at an incredible rate. So this is a very scary combo for the killer at least. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna equip a toolbox. We're gonna equip the brand new part, a wired spool, and I'm gonna show you guys how crazy this stuff really is. We're gonna get in a live game, I'm gonna give some live commentary. Uh, I'll try to give you some tips on some general stuff uh, about maybe which generators to take first but um yeah let's go ahead and get in the game and I'm gonna show you guys how strong this stuff is okay kind of a low rank squad <clears throat> but hopefully the brand new part I got loaded in this toolbox will make up for that okay so real quick I guess I'll go over uh, general strategy with uh, generator repairing and the devs have actually said this on their uh, twitch channel I believe that there normally there's a few outliers of generators that are along the edges or corners of the map and then there's usually like a cluster around the center of the map and what generally happens is that survivors will go for the ones on the outside of the map or the outliers first and this actually isn't the best thing to do even though it's what comes natural because as a survivor you want to stay along the edges of the map because the killer is always patrolling the center of the map he's crisscrossing patrolling so his, most of his activity and his presence is going to be towards the center of the map that is why the edges corners are going to be usually the safest as a survivor of course if the killer you know he suspects something he'll go in and expect that inspect that corner of the map but uh as a survivor, you actually you want to try and get work your way in a little bit to um, get the center, get the work on the cluster, center cluster first. And what this brand new part will actually allow me to do is, I mean, we want to save it when there's one or two, maybe three generators left, and then pop it. So we're just gonna burn some charges here. Uh, to get maximum use out of this toolbox because of course once I hit spacebar and burn the instant use 
I mean, it's gonna destroy the toolbox and the new, brand new part regardless. I'm gonna burn my sprint burst because it'll be back up in no time. Survivor injured, so we know we're clear. We can just run out here. Gonna get a little more use out of these charges. The guy being chased just walked right by me. Oh my god. I saw the survivor running from that direction, so I figured he'd be over there, but not quite the case. Okay, so here a guy repairing his generator. Please heal me. Oh god. Please heal me. There we go. So, this generator is on the outside. Oh. Uh, please finish. Okay. Oh, bear trap on there. It's no bueno. Okay, so this map's probably best for the killer because he can just. I mean, there's really nowhere to jump. There's very little amount of pallets. I don't know if I'll make it this one. Barely. Don't really need to look back at him because I saw his red light and knew what he was doing. Okay, so let that sprint burst cool down, recharge a little bit, and we should be safe. So that one up there is almost done. I think we can go finish it. Okay, saw that trap. Got a little worried. Getting this one early is really good as well, because of the same philosophy of uh, getting the inside cluster down. Because he's less likely to be around this area, because there's a lot more generators to defend. By the way, this is where a trapdoor spawn can be, right in this little uh, porch area here. It's not there here, unfortunately. Teammate went down. Try to hide near a pallet. Oh, too bad he didn't go through this pallet. It could have knocked him out of the hands. But if you hide near a pallet, it gives you a fallback in case he does uh, find you. Okay, so they're going to be doing that. We're going to go ahead and keep working generators, actually. That didn't happen, by the way. Once this gets really low on charges, we're going to switch to left click here. Oh, that's bad timing. At least explosions might distract the killer. Maybe he comes out here and tries to see what's going on. Doing a generator right next to a hooked survivor is actually pretty good. Because it can really... Because he wants to defend generators, so it could really bait him into coming out here. See if he does it. Yeah, he's, he's into it. It's really good for me because I have Sprint Burst. Whew, close one. So Sprint Burst has like 7 seconds until it's off cooldown. <laughs> Got that stun. He might go for that. Nope. Okay, we're out here. So he wasn't able to make use of that trap. Because I stunned him there. That's good. Uh oh. Okay. Usually I find killers don't have that hard of a time finding you in the cornfield. So once this is down, there's going to be two generators left. And now I gotta make a decision if I want to save the brand new part for the second generator or the very last one. Oh yeah, something helpful to know about this: these combines on the farm map. You can camp right here, and since this is third person, I can spot him. He can't really spot me. I can see if he's pushing up here because this is a one way. It's uh, you can he has to come, he has to come up this way. And then if he does come up, I can just there's actually a vault right here. 
can also spot over this without being seen, but I really got to keep an eye on this in case he starts running up here. Okay, so we should be good. Oops. I actually meant to hit spacebar to... Oh, that's right. You have to right-click and then spacebar. There we go. So, there it is. Popped. Now we just need one left. Let's see if there's another one at this combine over here. And it's almost done. Good. That was, that was perfect usage of that brand new part. Boom. Let me heal this guy real fast. Definitely look and remember where those exit doors are at. Whoa. Okay. So if you guys hooked, you actually want to try and unlock the exit door first. Because when you get him off that hook, he's going to be injured and you want to get him off the map as soon as possible. And it can draw the killer out. Oh, uh, that guy just got hit. Let's see if we can wrap this up. Okay, there's a pretty good opportunity. I've already used my toolbox, so... <laughs> really nothing else to lose. Oh, oh no, are you kidding me? Uh, sucks. Oh, my teammate left me left oh geez okay since I'm injured and I have no way to heal myself I have to leave I actually could have gone for him but he has a pretty easy patrol route got sprinters coming up so we're good Whew, that was uh, pretty rough, but that toolbox did help us out there quite a bit, being able to instantly complete that one generator. Again, uh, medkit is extremely useful, though, because it can keep you alive a lot, a lot easier. But, I mean, in uh, good survivor's hands, brand new part, you can really get the generators online pretty quick. Plus, I mean, you're instantly getting a thousand objective points, so it gets you a lot of points pretty quick as well. Alright, that about wraps up this video. Uh, let me know if I talk too much. I think I talked for some like 15 minutes on perks and stuff, but I mean, there's a lot of information to give. Hopefully I made up for that uh, with the brand new part usage. And I do actually have a new video that's already has footage recorded, and it's going to be much different than the gameplay videos that I've already put out. It's going to be no commentary, but it's going to be a surprise, but all I need to do is render out the video and then upload it, so it should be right around the corner. And let me know what you guys think of, of this video and what you, what you think of the uh, no commentary video I'm going to put out. And there's a reason for the no commentary, but hopefully you guys enjoy this, and I will catch you next time. Thanks. Could be dead already. It took a long time to do this. Going back behind enemy lines, boys. This could be potentially the end for me, boys. I'm not gonna lie. Let's go, let's go, let's go, soldier, move, move, move. Move, move, move. Move, 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 move. Alpha Delta 9 and 420, go, go, go. If you need a heal, heal. If you think you can move, move, soldier, move. Leave her alone. Oh shit, I gotta go now. You're on your own, dude. Not really.
Alright. Just get out the other door, dude! Just get out the other door! No! Crusade! Fuck! Come on, you're gonna wiggle free. I got you. I believe in you. Yes! Wiggle, 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 wiggle! Oh, he's blocking the door. Oh, shit. Go, go, girl, go, girl, go, girl. Go, girl, don't look back. You hold that W. You hold that shit bar. You get the fuck out of there, girl. Yes! Let's go, boys. Mission complete. We got it, dude. We made it, boys. We made it. We made it. We made it.